Just sit in one plane, don't move. Ready? Yep. Hey you guys, Erin and Dusty here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to our channel. So today we have a short and sweet introduction before we dive right into a Q&A with one of our favorites. Yes, this doc needs no introduction. Dr. Michael Greger himself is one of the most, probably most famous plant-based docs, not just in the nation, but in the world. He is the founder of nutritionfacts.org. We've seen him talk multiple times. I mean, the guy's a genius, we love him. <laughs> also the author of How Not to Die. His new book is coming out soon called How Not to Diet. And yep. he also has a book called How to Survive a Pandemic. Right. So his information <laughs> clearly is very extremely relevant in yep. many different areas. So stay tuned, we are asking him some of our burning questions as plant-based parents and as individuals, yep. as well as some of your most commonly asked questions. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Let's dive right in. Dr. Gregor is here, one of our favorites. We have, we've actually met you a couple of times. I'm sure we'll have some selfies to insert. I think we right. met at the uh, plant-based conference in Anaheim a couple years ago. We met you right. again. Um, in Las Vegas at the A4M conference. And oh. that one actually, thinking back, was not a plant-based conference. Um, but we were your we were your vegan fans in the back <laughs> laughing right. at jokes. And so yeah. Anyway, you uh you're here with us today and we're so glad you're taking some time again to answer some questions. And yeah, we'll have our <laughs> followers get to know you if they don't already through your number of books and your amazing website, nutritionfacts.org. Thanks for being here. Yes, thank you so Happy much. Happy to be here. I'm trying cool. to equate like who you are to us, like in the celebrity <laughs> world, to like the rest of the world. Like right. you are that guy to us. Aww, that's sweet. <laughs> we, uh, uh, yeah, we, like I said, we've got selfies and, and we're, we're taking photos with Dr. Esselstyn and, and Dr. Nice. Gray, sending them, sending them to our families and they're like, who are these doctors? You guys are just nerds. What are you doing and where are you at? <laughs> Except but. now they've slowly but surely started to adopt a lot of our Nice. Things. Oh, healthy family. That's what we would like to hear. It yeah. makes it easier on us because we don't have to pre-eat, bring food with us as much. Uh, right, as right. On, on the veggie burgers. <laughs> totally. Nice, nice. Good for them. Yep. Yeah. So we eat primarily raw throughout the day. We are not entirely raw, but what is what are your thoughts on it, an entirely raw food diet? Yeah, it seems to be that there are certain uh, people on a plant-based diet that think the raw diet is the uh, kind of there's a hierarchy there, and that to, to be raw makes you uh, kind of king of the mountain, so to speak. <laughs> what uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, I've got a bunch of videos on uh, on uh, raw food diets, sure. um, and the data does not bear that bear it out. Uh -huh. uh, and so they've looked at uh, long-term raw foodists and actually um, uh, deficient in a number of uh, nutrients that you'd think they'd be getting tons of because they eat so many fruits and vegetables. But a lot of uh, nutrients become more absorbable upon cooking. So you get. Sure you know, five times more beta carotene in your bloodstream eating cooked carrots compared to raw carrots. You more get more of the cancer-fighting compound lycopene, the red pigment in tomatoes when you eat processed tomato products like tomato sauce, tomato paste, then yep. when eating raw tomatoes. Um, and uh, at the same time, there are some uh, heat-sensitive compounds like uh, folate and vitamin C uh, that are partially destroyed by cooking. Sure. Um, not by much though. So you microwave broccoli a couple minutes um, and you can get as much as a 15% uh, uh, detriment um, decrement in vitamin C, but that's fine. So you could just eat, you know, six florets of steamed broccoli, get so you all the vitamin C of five florets of raw broccoli, and if you like steamed broccoli more than raw broccoli, well then go for it. Um, right. So I think the bottom line message is a combination of cooked and raw foods. The more fruits and vegetables you can stuff in your face, the better. So how do you cook your vegetables? Yeah. The way you like it. You like yeah. raw vegetables, eat raw vegetables. You eat, you, you, whatever way will get you to get you fruits and vegetables, that's what I care about. With sure. the exception of tempura. I don't want people deep frying their no. vegetables sure. either way. That, that actually brings me to another question we had was, what is the optimal way to cook your food? Because we've got air fryers, um, pressure cookers, the stove top for sauteing, like yeah. so many different ways. And we're just not sure, like, what is the best? Um, so we've got a bunch of videos on that, um, and it turns out there's uh, 
uh, different cooking methods have different effects on different vegetables. Um, now some, uh, it's kind of the same across the board. So no matter how you cook a bell pepper, you yeah. get a surprising detriment um, in uh, the, uh, I believe it was antioxidant content that was mentioned. There, there's like no good way to cook a, to cook a bell pepper. Sure. Um, and so really that's one of the, you know, few, you really want to kind of eat raw if you have a chance, you just get so much more nutrition. Um, but there's some, you know, uh, that are better with boiling, better with steaming. That's why I have a whole chart and, you know, go deep in lots of videos. But in terms of a general, yeah. um, uh, uh, we uh, like moist or wet um, uh, heat cooking. So it doesn't get, temperature doesn't get too high. So that's boiling, steaming, uh, pressure cooking. Um, yeah. as opposed to baking, broiling, grilling, toasting. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, just because the, the, the presence of water keeps the, the temperature um, uh, relatively low. Um, and in terms of preserving uh, nutrition in greens, for example, um, which is the healthiest food on the planet, dark yeah. green leafy vegetables, um, uh, pressure steaming is uh, is probably the best. And so if you have one of those um, electric uh, pressure cookers like Instapot, yeah, um, yeah. you basically, so for kale, you steam for zero minutes, which is basically just as soon as the pressure gets up and automatically turns off and quick, you take it out before it, it goes away. That's probably the best way just because it minimizes the time and minimizes contact with water. So you just don't have leaching of nutrients into the water. Sure, so boil over your cool. potatoes, don't bake them. <laughs> uh, oh, well, so yeah, for sweet potatoes. Um, yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah, uh, I mean, you get microwaving sweet potatoes. Sure. Um, it's even quicker than like, uh, you know, uh, pressure steaming them or boiling them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Good deal. Um, and baking, uh, baking, uh, baking potatoes um, is fine because it's actually a steaming process. That's what happens inside is the water vaporizes and actually steams the inside. So as long as you're not eating the skin, um, you're basically eating a steamed food even though you baked it. Sure. That makes sure. sense. Cool. That's good to know. We live on sweet potatoes. I'm sweet oh, potatoes. Man. He's regular potatoes. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Cool. Well, the, you are healthier for it. <laughs> we are potato heads, know. that's for sure. A lot of our coaching clients ask about um, digestion and bloating and like being super gassy and like yeah. what do you do about that on plants? Yeah. yeah, some people have to start slow. So it all depends on your microbiome. It all depends on what kind of bugs you have. And if yeah. you've been slathering your guts with, you know, milkshakes and cheeseburgers your whole life, I mean, you just don't have the kind of microbial machinery to deal with sure. eating a healthy diet. And so uh, that'll change. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have a few little fiber feeders down there starving and uh, creeping every time you eat that fast food. But all of a sudden you eat a carrot and they're like, woohoo! And they will uh, get fruitful and multiply. And soon your gut will be taken over by uh, healthy bacteria that sure. eat fiber, produce these wonderful short chain fatty acids. You have all sorts of benefits from your brain to your immune system, blah, blah, blah. All yeah. those side benefits of, uh, of eating those prebiotics, resistant starch and fiber found in whole grains and uh, legumes uh, um, uh, predominantly. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, uh, but it may take people to get there. Some people can switch, have no problem. Yep. Um, but, uh, but other people, um, uh, you know, they may have to go really slow. And by really slow, I mean, I, I mean, there have been folks that, that I've had in my practice who are like, all right, eat one spoonful of chickpeas today. Oh. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's start there. Okay. And then we'll Work. see how we do. Um, and you just kind of slowly ramp it up. Um, yep. uh, but uh, it's critically important to finally get there yep. where, you know, you have a fully functioning, uh, you know, gastrointestinal symptom. And then you really have the best of both worlds. Sure. Yeah, that's good. I spent the weekend in Colorado with a group of buddies on kind of a men's retreat, and I convinced the chef to cook everything vegan. And uh, surprisingly, everybody was excited about it. But nice. yeah, there was a lot of burping and farting going on on uh, <laughs> while we were climbing mountains. But anyway, so that's super helpful. That's yeah. good. Well, uh, what's a men's retreat without farting? I mean, come exactly. on. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also kind of curious, like, what would you recommend as like the core supplements that people be on? Like nothing that's like 
you know, above and beyond like fancy superfoods, but just core important supplements. Yeah. So critically important for anyone eating healthy would be a regular reliable source of vitamin B12. And the easiest way to do that is with the B12 supplement, either 50 micrograms uh, once a day or uh, 2000 micrograms once a week. Costs less than five bucks a year, super easy, but critically important to get. There's a bunch of different types on the market. I recommend cyanocobalamin in the cheapest um, form. It's most shelf stable. Uh, that's, that's the one that's kind of critically important. Then the other things, depending on kind of, you know, uh, you know, where you live, like vitamin D, some people get inadequate sunshine. If you're in Colorado climbing yep. a mountain, you're gonna, you have all the sun you need. But, you know, other people, regardless of where they live, they have a desk job. They're inside all day, particularly during that critical window, those midday um, uh, hours, you know, 10 to 2. Um, mm -hmm. That's where uh, most vitamin D production is made. If your skin is light enough, though, if you're skinny enough and young enough, just 10 minutes on forearms and face to get all the vitamin D you need during midday sun, during kind of the summer months. Uh, but uh, at some of the higher latitudes, um, like in the Northeast or Pacific Northwest, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, during the winter months, you're not going to make any, uh, you know, vitamin D, no matter how long you're, you know, sunbathing naked on the commons in, in Boston or something, <laughs> uh, in February. Right. And so you need to take a supplemental source of vitamin D. And so I'd recommend, uh, you know, 2000 international units of vitamin D a day for anyone not getting adequate sunlight. Sure. I've, uh, I've heard of, of course, you know, we're going through a pandemic and there's uh, some issues there, cold and flu season coming up as well. I've, had, I've heard some recommendations of taking up to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D to protect yourself. Is there any added benefit? Are there any warnings against that? Or what, what's your advice? Um, uh, I think it's unnecessary. Um, I think uh, if you're, uh, I think 2,000 um, is all you need now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, what that, I mean, that takes two standard deviations of people up to normal. Yeah. So that basically 98 and a half percent of people at 2,000 international units today, you should hit your kind of target of sure. where we really want people to be. Um, and uh, vitamin D is important for immunity, but only for people who are vitamin D deficient. So okay. if you take people who don't have vit enough vitamin D and you just bring them up to normal levels. Yeah. then you can actually get a boost of immunity uh, significantly. So, but if you take people with normal levels and add extra on top of it, it doesn't do better. Like more right. is not better. Same thing with vitamin C. If you have scurvy, vitamin C will boost your immune system. But if you have normal amounts of eating, you know, yeah. fruits and vegetables, then adding extra vitamin C or extra zinc is not going to help. Um, sure. The studies that show benefit for like zinc supplements, for example, are done in the developing world um, in impoverished, you know, countries where you have kids who are malnourished and adding, hey, giving them a zinc supplement when they have pneumonia, a yeah. simple, cheap, easy, can actually improve a mortality, it can get them. I mean, that's amazing. You take some simple little mineral that's really cheap and actually improve their chances of surviving. But had they just had food, just, yeah. just healthy food, then the zinc supplement presumably would not work. Sure. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, I had never really thought of it like that, but it's kind of like, duh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. But the supplement industry, so that's how they can get away with saying zinc is critical for immune function. Vitamin right. C, critical for immune function. But now all that is technically true, but yeah. the, the asterisk is for people who are deficient. Right, right, right. Makes perfect sense. Eating a healthy plant, uh, a well rounded diet will get you there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, Let's see. I've, I've got a, another question too, actually, going back to my weekend with the guys, you know, there was a lot of the food was made with oil. I was just happy it was vegan, you know, for, for some 30 year old um, guys like myself, I'm not too worried. Um, we've got a two year old, a toddler that we do incorporate some, some oil in. Um, we, we primarily avoid it, Aaron and I do when we're cooking, but what are your thoughts on that? Is there an, is there a particular group that we can say oil is okay? Is there uh, certain people that definitely want to avoid it? And is it okay for kids? So, um, you know, the way to look at it is to refine food. So it's the, you know, table sugar of the fat kingdom, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you think of kind of the carbohydrate king, take something super healthy, like a sweet potato, or a beet, you know, that's where most sugar actually comes from these days, um, from sugar beets, it's sure. really healthy food. Then you remove all the nutrition, all the fiber, and you're left with just the pure, you know, table sugar. Yeah. Um, and so you just threw out all the nutrition, right? 
Um, right. And so the same thing. So you take something like a walnut, you remove all the nutrition you're left with walnut oil. It yeah. has no fiber. Now, it does have a few fat-soluble fat nutrients like vitamin E still uh, left in there also. It's not completely stripped. But yeah. uh, it's just in terms of kind of bang for your caloric buck. You know, you yeah. got like 2,000 calories basically for like the day. How do you yeah. want to spend it? I mean, you right. can eat mountains of normal food or the most calorically dense food. One tablespoon is like 120 calories. And you're yeah. just like wasting it. And you're not even really feeling it. Sure. Um, and so, I mean, that's kind of the, the, I mean, that's kind of the basic, but so having said that, it's like, so, you know, we're saying our added sugar is bad for you. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason we should be, you know, um, you know, uh, adding sugars to food, but if adding, if the only way you're going to eat your grapefruit is sprinkle some sugar on it, well yeah. then, you know, the, getting that grapefruit into you, I mean, it, it, it's like a vehicle right. to get healthier food into you. Right. Sure. right. Um, uh, and so it's same thing with oil. Like if, um, uh, you know, if, if that will kind of facilitate eating healthier stuff, yeah. um, uh, then, you know, that's, you know, the, 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 it's, it's kind of the total diet picture, but it's, so it's, it's like empty calories, but they're not like special empty calories yeah. that are necessarily more detrimental than any kind of empty calories you might get. Um, and for kids, you know, kids, they have such tiny little stomachs. Yeah. Um, and so I'm so glad, so I'm so glad you brought this up because, you know, one a problem people can get into is yeah. they think whole food, plant-based, lots of fiber, lots of salad. That's great for people who are trying to lose weight. Right. Like it's just, there's there's so few calories in a mountain of food. Yeah. But you do that in a kid, you can yeah. have children who are failing to thrive. They're just literally not getting enough calories, right? right. And they get full so quick. Yeah. And you, you do the math, and you're like, wait a second, I got 15 calories, and there's no way they can grow, right? right? And they yeah. actually need more calories per kind of unit pound body weight than everybody because they're actively growing. Yeah. Um, and so that's why they're the ones we really need to get really calorically dense foods into, right? Like the, you know, nut and seed butters and the avocado and the smoothies and the, I mean, you know, where it's just like really concentrated sure. um, nutrition um, because, you know, you only got a little, little teeny stomach to work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, we, so... We, we often include, you know, oils and tons of nut butters and stuff for Max, but we have people that ask and say, we thought you were oil free and, and, and the people go crazy. We are. But yeah, <laughs> but so, so that makes, that makes perfect sense, you know, especially for a little growing, little growing guy. So excellent. Adorable. He's, he's actually sleeping right now. We don't know how we got, we don't know how we got we him to sleep. Really yeah. Usually <laughs> No, I want to see him as a prop in the background. Come on. He'll probably be up before the end here. I so we've got some other questions about, I would, I would say motherhood and breastfeeding. A lot of our uh, followers are breastfeeding moms or mo Fantastic. moms. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of, you know, like I'm still breastfeeding and it's been two years or three years mm -hmm. and I've heard fed. Hallelujah. It. A lot of people say breastfed is best, but then other people say fed is best. And you know, uh, no. breast is best as long as possible. I mean, you can obviously start supplementing and mixing, but yeah. as long as possible. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, the data, the data is, is beautiful. I mean, and so, I mean, the really, I mean, it's these, you know, social pressures and just kind of cultural things that uh, yeah. pull uh, women away um, and convenience and all sorts of factors, but the more total breast milk you can get into a child in their yeah. lifetime, the better, yeah. like, you know, as long, as much as possible, absolutely critical. The perfect, perfect food engineered for millions of years to have the absolute perfect everything. In fact, we're discovering right. new stuff in breast milk all the time. And so all of a sudden, all the formula manufacturers have to add it. They're like, oh my God, we didn't yeah. know about rachidonic acid. Oh my God, we didn't know about these little fructooligosaccharides, like these little prebiotics that help the bacteria. We didn't even know. Okay, so then we put it in. But you know, we only find out about this later and they're always behind the curve. Um, yeah, breast is always best as much and as long as possible. Not awesome. to mention, it does save on a lot of money. <laughs> it does. <laughs> there food. you go, oh my God. Yeah, there, I didn't even think about that. It's it's nature's gift. I think I've had a significant amount of, of mom's breast milk myself because whatever Max doesn't take in his smoothie, dad's usually left to chug it down. And I'm like, hey, if it's as good as it is, 
No, we're not letting that go to waste. But Where, anyway. Would you have um, one, a recommendation, say, if someone just unfortunately is unable to produce sure. sufficient um, supply? So, uh, I mean, the most important thing, so, you know, you uh, find your local La Leche League, you know, yep. chapter. There's all sorts of, I think uh, women often give up too soon or just inexperienced. You know, they just don't have the family connections or the social connections that have that support, particularly for first time mothers. Um, yep. And so there are experts and this is all they do. And they've got tons, a long list of stuff. And one thing doesn't work, you try the other thing, you try the other thing, try the other thing. Um, and now if at the end of the list, still um, inadequate uh, breast milk production, then the second best is uh, a breast bank a surrogate, we still want human breast milk, um, uh, if however possible, and sure. only if after every possible avenue has been exhausted, would one default to something, uh, you know, as substandard as formula. Sure, Okay. makes perfect sense. No. You know, another concern that we have, again, as parents and, and some of our followers, we want to make sure that we're giving people the right information as, as they watch us and, and raise their own children. What about things like iron and EPA, DHA for, for infants and toddlers? Um, so they're going to get it through the breast milk. So they're, okay. they're going to get it through the umbilical cord, then they're going to get it through the breast milk. So the most important thing for all these nutrients for infants is how well the mom's eating. So particularly important time, in fact, even before pregnancy, ideally, um, is to improving one's diet, decreasing one's you know, intake of you know, toxic heavy metals like mercury, et cetera, and in improving one's nutritional status, because all of a sudden you're gonna be sharing some of that nutrition and that continues after breastfeeding. And so most of that will be passed along um, directly through. Um, and then after weaning, um, you can, uh, you know, you can take some, uh, you know, DHA, those little capsules and squeeze it out, um, yeah. into something. Um, and you know, they won't even know the taste and we really don't have, um, data past weaning except on older adults on the benefits of supplemental long chain yeah. omega-3 fatty acids. But until we know more, I'm kind of erring on the side of caution, recommending, um, uh, people start that after weaning. Sure, good deal. And then in sp specifically with iron, is there a supplement you recommend or a type that you recommend or just give them as lentils and you know, what do you what do you recommend? Yeah, we really want whole food sources whenever possible. Okay. Um, so iron rich sources are, um, you know, whole grains and legumes and nuts and seeds. We want to, um, you know, get those little kind of seed foods. Those are all just various seeds botanically. Yeah. Um, and that's where you see um, a lot of the mineral content. Um, and that really, I mean, that's that's really the best. You know, there's a lot of kind of iron enriched, you know, uh, you know, uh, grain cereals kind of things. Sure. Um, better than taking a pill. Uh, pills can kind of irritate the stomach, cause nausea, cause other problems. Um, yeah. We really want to get to a, a source that's um, more absorbent. You can have um, vitamin C rich foods with the meals. Okay. And so that's tropical fruits, citrus, bell peppers, broccoli. Those are all rich in vitamin C and actually help. The, yeah. the, lentil, the, the, the lentil iron get absorbed into the system. Sure. Um, and so having some kind of iron rich food with all the meals dramatically improves uh, iron absorption. Awesome. Awesome. I have one last question. So what's popular on I'm gonna go YouTube grab Max. Is... Oh, right, yay. <laughs> so these what I eat in a day videos just go crazy. So we're kind of curious. Can you give us a small, a brief snapshot of what you eat in a day? <laughs> um, sure. Well, it's epitomized by the Daily Dozen. So I really, I mean, that's how. So I came up, you know, with this, you know, uh, you know, trying to come up with a list of all the healthiest of healthy foods I encourage people to fit into their daily routine. And it was something that I, uh, you know, used to have like a whiteboard on the fridge because, you know, I'd read research about something. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot how amazing flax seeds were. I told I I've told I used to I used to do it and then I stopped doing. It. Ah, so I write it down. Oh, my God. There he is. He's this is Max. Boy. <laughs> Hi, boy. Hi, sweetie. Um, and so I do try to go. And so it's free app, iPhone, Android. You can click through. Um, yeah. So basically, I just try to fit all that stuff in in, in terms of like, well, wait a second, how do you make all those ingredients fit in actual meals? That's with the cookbook. So I have a How Not to Die cookbook and a new How Not to Diet cookbook coming out in December. You can pre-order now. All proceeds go to charity. Um, and uh, and so just those are the recipes I actually eat. I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Well, we are. Hey! 
<laughs> He's usually good about saying hi and waving, but no, again. no, it's okay. I, I, that's how I look when I wake up. Yeah. Well, again, Dr. Gregor, it's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we hope our paths will cross again someday soon. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and your week. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep you posted, and your team will send the video over when. Uh, when it's finished <laughs> and yeah thanks for everything you do you uh you've made our jobs as uh plant-based parents and and individuals easier so we we really appreciate you yes so happy to help keep up the good work stay safe and don't forget to vote yes <laughs> yes we will amen amen we'll see you doctor see ya Bye. So we hope you guys like this interview. If you like these interviews, we've done a few on the channel and you'd like to see more, leave us some love in the comments below and let us know. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more like it. Hit that subscribe button and join us here and make sure that bell is clicked to turn on your notifications. You can follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram. And until next time, eat, move, rest, your best, and get in those daily dozens. Bye. Bye. Max is waving. Come on, we're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.